following on from the first video which explained that I was installing a second leisure battery into the camper van I thought I'd just show you some of the modifications and try and answer some of the questions that were asked from that video so first of all one question that was asked was how does the batteries get charged so there's two ways that the batteries get charged as you'll see here at the moment the van is on the drive and it's actually plugged into the mains so it's charging through the internal power management system which does it all automatically so there's a power battery charger built into the power management system which i'll show you in a second and that regulates the charge going into the batteries when it's moving the alternator from the van through the split charging system that's installed charges the van battery first then it charges the leisure battery when the van battery is fully charged anyway let's have a look at what i've done so a lot of this you've seen before so we've got the two leisure batteries in there now sometimes i call them house batteries but you'll also notice quite a few wires and what they are is they are for these devices down here okay so this is on battery one and we can see that there is a draw on battery one, 42.3 watts, uh, 3.25 amps, which is the fridge basically. Um, nothing on battery two. So battery two is fully charged, 13.37 volts. Um, if I switch that over onto battery two now, you'll see that the, the draw has gone onto battery two Okay, and nothing on battery one, and battery one has got lots of charge. That just really keeps me informed as far as the condition and the state of charge of the battery. And those little low voltage cables are for the monitoring system. This is, uh, this is just an inverter. It takes 12 volts and converts it up to mains voltage. So this is the back of the power management system. This is actually a unit that you can buy and fit into a van. So it comes complete, the split charging systems all built into there, the mains, the voltage step down and all that kind of stuff. It's all built into that one unit. And they're not even very expensive, quite useful, especially for a camper van anyway. There's the front of it. So you'll see that various switches and fuses there. Uh, this is the 240 volt side. So we've got an rcd breaker there and three individual breakers depending on which circuit has tripped this one here that's down is actually a, a circuit for the microwave and these will be for plugs charger's not illuminated at the moment because we've got no mains plugged in fuses battery condition this lights up if you've got the polarity of the mains wrong and pump which is for the the water pump there was another question that was asked which was why did i go to the effort of doing it like that and not simply just paralleling the batteries together, which I suppose on the face of it is a good question. I didn't instantly know the answer first of all, and that was the conclusion that I jumped to until I did some research. Problem was, if I'd have just simply paralleled the batteries up, because they would have been different batteries, one would have been about three years old, the other one would have been brand spanking new, one would have been from one manufacturer, the other one would have been from a different one, and one would have been 115 amp hours, the other one would have been 120 amp hours. Because of all of those differences that would have meant that paralleling them together simply connecting positive to positive negative to negative would have meant that there was a conflict between them and from what I've learned they would have kind of I don't know started draining each other or or deteriorating a lot quicker anyway because when you're paralleling batteries together as I understand it the way that you're supposed to do it is to do two brand new batteries both exactly the same from the same manufacturer same power everything if one of them wears quicker than the other one then you're supposed to scrap both of them and start again which can be very costly so the reason why i chose to do it like this is because number one it enables me to isolate each individual battery i have got the ability to to combine them as you've seen by the the switch at the top but also, as one of the batteries is three years old, you can assume that that will need changing before the new one. So therefore, I can now change individual batteries and leave the other battery in place. So there you go, hopefully that answers the question. Feel free, ask any questions. I'll try and answer them as constructively as I possibly can. Thanks a lot for watching. Take care, bye-bye.